So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be rooting it. Um, and to do that we're going to be using a virtual box environment running a uh, mini or I think it's called little or mini or small Linux or something like that. You'll just follow the process so on this website right here I'll put the link for this. Um, you're going to install VirtualBox on your PC so go ahead and install it with that link. Um, then you're going to download the OVA file containing the Linux virtual machine on it. Um, so either one of these and then you're going to import it to the VirtualBox by file. Open up VirtualBox clicking file import appliance and selecting it or you can just start it. Um, usually though what I do is I already installed VirtualBox and um, I just click on it on the OVF file and so the VirtualBox manager comes up and then this comes up whenever I selected it and then um, you can go ahead and do import. Cool. So you see I already had it once before um, but I went ahead and did it again. It did an underscore one. It's the same exact thing. Um, and that's it so go ahead and start it and this error comes up if this error comes up for you uh, go to change network settings and uh, you want to be able to do a do bridged select your NIC card and that should be good click OK and it should run so you want to make sure that your network card is um, working with this so you you want to take care of that error make sure it's linked and bridged because you're going to be using your network so it's fine so this is uh, an automated script to uh, root your Motorola Dribonic with the jelly bean uh, so thank you Scott Martin or at Marty 45714 really appreciate it man this saved me a lot of time so what actually you're gonna be doing is we're gonna go on our phone and I would show you the phone but as you've seen before it's super blurry so I'm, I'm just not even gonna bother make sure right now um, depending on if you logged into your Google account and it restored everything it should restore your Wi-Fi network or if not uh, make sure you're connected to your local uh, network your Wi-Fi your router whatever connect to it that's actually what I'm doing right now. Okay, I'm connecting to my Wi-Fi network, and it's connecting. So after you're done with that, then you're gonna want to open up all your apps and look for the Files application. And then whenever you open it up, click on the Remote Storage. It's the third option. Then Add Storage at the bottom, and then for the host IP, enter what you sh you show on your Linux Minimal. So it would be this one right here. So I'm gonna type that in. So then for domain name type in my group so essentially what you're doing is you're just typing everything in that it's telling you to type in simple enough so then for the share folder share username guest and then for the password it will be bionic cool so go ahead and click connect and then you'll see that a share folder comes up with the IP address that you just added so uh, do not leave trailing spaces at the ends of the words. Um, so you may you have to be connected to the Wi-Fi on the same network as I stated before, and uh, make sure that that is connected and you have a SMB share, which which is what we just set up, and then press enter to continue. So it verifies that there is something connected to the SMB share. If you did it correctly, you will have established and confirmed. So you're going to continue. Uh, you have to verify that your phone is configured for USB bugging. So hit the menu button click system settings and then go to all the way down to developer options turn them on at the top right there's a little switch option and then turn on USB debugging and then click OK USB debugging is like the fifth option down so once that is done you can go ahead and press the home button and then drag down the taskbar from the top and then it says connected as a mass storage you want to change that click that and change it to a media device which is MTP in, in parentheses so as you saw on the screen it changed and it's ready to go so we went ahead and changed it to USB debugging and changed it to MTP so we're good to go so I'm going to click home on the phone and then press enter so this is going to be checking if the phone is connected via USB and it is and it will be continuing so now it's uploading the exploit to your phone and if this is not happening for you, um, 
make sure that everything before is good make sure your MTP is connected make sure your Wi-Fi is connected to your phone it's rebooting right now and then this is a very important step you're gonna feel it vibrating and then press the volume up down or power and then once you do it then just wait for it to completely reboot and you might hear it vibrating right now cool so it's rebooted and I'm on the lock screen right now I'm gonna unlock it and then I'm gonna press enter and then it's cleaning everything up and it's complete so I'm gonna press enter again and it will reboot the phone once more and as I was saying before, I'm sorry, that was a very important step to press volume up or down or the power button. As I was saying before, it's kind of uh, a fail safe. It will tell you if um, you do have the network share completed up there as I showed you before. Um, and if everything's set up and your USB is uh, connected via MTP and all that stuff, you should not have an issue at all. So it's rebooting again. So after this, honestly, you're, you're good to go. I'm just going to let this keep running just so you see that it will be safe to disconnect here soon. But that's what we've done. We've modified a FXC files to allow you to go back to stock even if you're rooted or whatever. And then we've rooted it. So this is a method that I usually use all the time whenever I get bored of my ROMs or I just want to clean install. And it's, it's worked without fail. So if you want to verify that you are rooted, you can get the Titanium Backup app or you can just go to the Play Store and download a root checker and it will tell you if you are rooted or not. So that's all for now guys. I hope this helped some of you users out there with the Droid Bionic and thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you have any other videos that you think you might need or you would like to know hitting that subscribe button will help you see them as soon as they come out once again thank you guys and y'all have a good one